Hi, this is Shadi, and today we are going to be discussing the old Japanese jujitsu rules in terms of fighting and competing. It wasn't like today. Today we mostly complain about the numerous rules and the restrictions and talk about how it should be less and less. Well, back in those days, there were barely any rules and it was so dangerous that Sakujiro Yokoyama, one of the four guardians of the Kodokan, was quoted saying, in those days, contests were extremely rough and frequently cost the participants their lives. Thus, whenever I sallied forth to take part in any of those affairs, I invariably bade farewell to my parents, since I had no assurance that I should ever return alive end quote so here you see how rough it was that even one of the fiercest judokas and one of the fiercest uh, in the history of old uh, kodokan judo sakujiro yokoyama who was called the demon yokoyama this is what we had to talk about talking about you know every contest was probably his last so this idea that um, old uh, jiu-jitsu or uh, traditional martial arts they were very weak and barely practiced any sparring and only kata it is uh, inaccurate and here just to see that how dangerous it was i'm gonna get into the rules and of course i will leave a link in the description below for you to read a little bit more uh, about it also jigoro kano in his memoir he was quoted it seemed that the kodokan had to take uh, on the whole of Japan and had to have a spirit of being ready for anything. Also, uh, in the Budo journal, Wayne Muramoto wrote, the duels were probably closer to the original intent of the word Shiai, which now means, quote, match or tournament, but once referred to Shini-ai to symbolically meet death itself. There were no Yuko or Koka, you scored with a full Ippon point, throws, chokes, holds, or arm locks that would, in actual situation, completely overwhelm your opponent. And the time limit was up to the judge. You usually went until someone dropped from sheer exhaustion or the judge ended it, awarding the match to the clear victor. Truly, it was Shini Ai. Uh, this is what he had to say that was around the 1880s and then in 1884 um, the first judo draft or competition rule draft was written i made a video on it i'll link it at the end and of course the kohaku shiai or the red and white contest was issued this was when uh they issued that the opponent, when they are laid flat on their back, the fight is immediately finished. The tap out uh, and the two second pin uh, was issued. Before that, it was either a KO um, or you tap out or you verbally tap out or passing out from sheer exhaustion or uh, a stoppage like you see today in MMA. So back then this is how it went so for example you can see a few examples of this being manifested indirectly for example when um you had a fight between yuji hiruka and matai montanabe in the jujitsu schools he was uh beaten with a dea shiharai that actually knocked him out when he fell on his head and back then you have to take into consideration the quality of the mats they are not like today the old traditional tatami was much more dense so you would imagine someone being dropped on their head and being uh, either concussed or breaking their neck and thus does not come out alive as sakujiro yokoyama uh, talked about in his uh, very famous quote another thing is of course the submission and the judge uh, stoppage after that it was issued the rules another example was actually uh, yokoyama himself being against uh, nakamura which was the uh, famous yoshinryu jujutsuka and from the uh, the records 
you would read they were written by Sanzo Mariama, you would see that they were talking about uh, minutes and minutes on end. We are talking 30 to 40 minutes in Newaza and then an hour of standing. And you would read he threw him with Harai Goshi and then Ippon Serenage and then uh, he threw him. Uh, and they stayed, for example, in Yo uh, Kamishi Ogatame or North South. And then he reversed it. And then you would think that what is going on? That match should have ended a long time ago. And yet they are still throwing each other and the fight is still continuing well that is because they are reflecting the old rules of jujitsu which was to truly go all out or um, you would end up either you know dying or the victor or passing out and hence you lost so uh, to stop all these throws being so dangerous and so devastating and being uh, done repeatedly on old tatami the first kodokan rule set said that the first throw that lays you flat on the ground should end the fight another thing is of course the tap out and of course the two second pin uh, of course the the length of the pin uh, evolved uh, it w later went on to 30 seconds and 25 and now we have it to 20 and we had the coca and wasari and of course the time uh, limit back then there wasn't even time limit so the nakamura yokoyama fight was uh, very long i'll give you another example of a very long fight and this is uh, another reason so if you think that they fought at the intensity of today's ijf no you are wrong because here i'm gonna put it here in front of you this is kato versus uh alio gracie they they were fighting you would see them they were like sizing each other they were twitching they were fainting trying to attack the kumikata seems to be very subtle and not so much explosive like today because in today's context both elio and kato would have be, would have been given a shido for being passive so that's why something like that would actually make the fight more dynamic but also reduces it in time because how much longer can you really go but if you took it at the pace of kato and elio here you see the fight would la last far longer and you would see exactly why and also the no throw rule of Ippon back then you would see why someone being thrown left and right and nothing happens to them so uh, is that the reason why the Gracies in, at the beginning like 1920s 1930s they would do these types of rules is it a reflection of these old uh, rules it is possible because um, they would either stop from passing out or tapping out. Uh, there was no pin, and no matter how much you throw someone, you didn't uh, you didn't lose. So it might be a little bit reflective of those old rules. I'm not sure. Or uh, the Gracies, when they issued their challenge, they curated these rules uh, for a particular reason. I'm not really sure. But uh, once you get to know these old jujitsu rules, and then you look at the very early. Uh, Gracie rules for example against Omori and all these uh, jiu-jitsu fighters or judokas you would see that it's a bit reflective of the old jiu-jitsu rules maybe back then the kodokan rules weren't as popular maybe they thought uh, they were a bit restrictive since Takeriano was doing heel hooks way after the leg locks were banned so if you have anything else to add let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon I have exclusive content for the patrons only I post there once a week so you are not obliged but uh, your support would be greatly appreciated and of course don't forget to check out josh simon's shop in the description this was shady and thank you for listening